Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, Stockfish 17 beta has arrived, and I am playing against Leela Zero with this new version, this game is very exciting because I sacrificed my bishop to get two passed pawns, I promise you will enjoy the game, so, let's get started without wasting any time, I began the game with e4, leading to the Sicilian defense, knight f3 variation, here, you have many options to consider, as the Sicilian defense is full of theory and tactics, however, Leela played an unusual move, a6. In the a6 move lies a very effective chess trap, let me show you the variation, it starts with d4, in the open variation of the Sicilian, black plays d6, after a few moves, when knight f6 comes, you can play the cunning move, rook to g1, this move sets up your plan to push your g-pawn forward, after knight c6 g4 appears on the board, you may notice that this pawn is attacked by two pieces but is guarded by the queen and rook, so, black thinks a bit and decides to go for a risky move, knight takes d4. Deflecting the pawn from the protection of the queen, after queen takes d4, the pawn becomes unguarded. This tactic is showcased by black, but don't worry, you have knight to d5, a very exciting move, when black plays knight e5, hoping to fork the white royal family with knight f3, you can play the clever move, queen c3, protecting that square and also threatening knight c7, the best move for black here would be bishop to g4. The idea is simple, if you play knight to c7, forcing the king to d7 and capturing the rook, you fall into black's trap, knight to f3 check arrives, putting your king in a precarious situation, you tried to trap black, but black traps you instead, but in our actual game, instead of playing bishop to g4, if black decided to consider knight to c6, then congratulations, he will fall into your trap, play bishop to e3 to control the b6 diagonal, there is a way for the knight, and as the rook moves, the bishop comes. Followed by knight to c7 check, your king, along with the rook and pawn, will be just gone, you can devastate the queen's side completely, and with the rook up, you will win the game, congratulations, you have learned a very effective chess trap. Going back to the position, instead of playing d4, because Leela is my best friend and knows every chess trap I have created, I decided to go with c3, following the Alapin variation, after e6 and some exchanges, you can see that these two center pawns provide me the open c file, Leela immediately strikes in the center with d5, she says that she is not inferior to me and also wants to develop her knight, queen, and bishop. I push forward the pawn, and after a few more moves, we have queen b6, attacking the pawns on d4 and b2, a3 followed in the game, and suddenly, I played bishop to d3. Many chess players might wonder why I played that move because knight takes d4 can win a pawn, did I blunder my pawn? No fool, I didn't blunder my pawn, I know every single variation of chess, there are 64 squares in chess with 32 pieces, and I know every possible variation, after knight takes d4 and queen takes d4, I can play a cunning move that can win your queen on the next move. In this position, Leela didn't capture the pawn because she knows the vulnerabilities, after a few more moves, I sacrificed my pawn on b2 again, every strong player knows that this is a poisoned pawn, if you dare to capture the pawn, I have the powerful move, knight to a4, attacking the queen and trapping it, I will win both your queen and your admiration at the same time. Going back to the position, we see that queen takes b2 didn't happen, instead, knight to a5 was played, with the idea of gaining control over two squares with the open diagonal for the bishop, and another knight can come at the same time, rook c8 gains access to the c4 square, that is her plan to progress on her path to enlightenment, all right, I played castle, noticing that the b2 pawn can be attacked by the queen, I played rook to b1, when knight comes to the c4 square. It becomes evident that black has the chance to consider knight g6. Therefore, I have to play a strong move supported by my pawn, h4, with the intention of playing h5, Leela just captured the bishop, making my pawn structure weak, but it's not a big deal because I get the open f file. Leela played f5, aiming to control two outposts. At the same time, you cannot perform an on move, because not every time, will you pull rabbits out of a hat, 
your pawn structure will be weak, that is why I played a very adventurous move, g4, many chess players might ask why I sacrificed a pawn. The point is that your bishop gets a free path, and the knight can come to the g5 square, as the knight moves, you can grab the pawn anytime, and even play knight to f7, attacking the rook, when the rook moves, bishop takes h7 can appear on the board. You also have the open rook file, and if we go back one move, you can see that this pawn will be under attack and will be gone in the next move, even if you consider h5, there is bishop g6 check and knight f7, making your king's position very vulnerable. So, let me share an inspirational quote with you. Go as slowly as you need to, take as many breaks as you need to, but never, ever give up. Returning to the position, we see that capturing the pawn on g4 is not possible due to certain circumstances, so we have g6, I play g5 to block the position, reinforce my knight on e2, and move my king to f2, the plan is simple, I want to play rook h1, knight g3, and push my pawn to h5, Leela responded by playing h5, her rebellious move, but I didn't respond directly, instead, I played before with the idea of supporting b5 with my bishop and rook simultaneously. That's why she played knight a7 to protect the b5 square. I then moved my knight back and reinforced it on f4 in the following moves. Suddenly, I played rook c1 to access this file, and after a few moves, we have a5 and bishop e2. Many chess players might consider pawn takes b4 since it's supported by the dark square bishop, however, in every chess position, there is a weak point, you have to find that weak point, after capture and recapture, you win a pawn, but can you guess my next move? It's bishop, takes h5. Congratulations if you found that move because after recapture, I can play g6 check, as the king moves to e7, knight takes h5 is powerful, when rook g8 comes on the board, you can move your knight to f6, attacking the rook, as the rook moves up, g5 will arrive, supported by the other pawn, and h6 will follow, supported by the rook, without the two dangerous knights, your king's position will be very vulnerable. Going back to the position, we see that it takes before is a bad choice, that's why we have rook exchanges on c1, when the knight comes to c6, I challenge you to find another brilliant move, think carefully and use your intuition, the move is bishop takes h5 again, sacrificing the bishop because after capture and recapture, g6 with the h-pawn can apply significant pressure on your king side, also, I have crucial knight positions that act like warriors, after you capture the pawn on b4 and I recapture. Some might think of knight takes b4, but that is also vulnerable because there's g6 check, as the king moves back, knight f6 check can arrive, protecting that square, and g7 follows next, your rook will be in danger, forcing you to accept my knight exchange offer, this gives me two sixth rank pawns, and with another pawn approaching, your rook will be gone, and you'll face efficient and effective damage to your position. So, going back to the position, we see that you didn't have time to waste on the before pawn, the pawn is secure because I have crucial past pawns on the king side, as I mentioned at the beginning of the game, I sacrificed my bishop to get two past pawns, Welcome to the stockfish show where every move is brilliant if you can analyze them, as the queen comes, queen a1 appears on the board, you might be surprised by my queen exchange offer to Leela 0. Many players might consider capturing the queen because black is materially ahead, but after the exchange happens, my rook will get the open file, rook g8 followed by knight f6 bring an adventorious pawn rebellion in h file, after the exchanges occur and knight takes before rook to a7 will follow in the game. When rook d8 follows, rook to b7 will support three connected past pawns, leading to a win, I'll push my h-pawn and, if possible, the g-pawn, your bishop will be under attack, and I can maneuver my knight to d3 followed by e5 to put more pressure on the bishop, your pawn will also be under attack, and my king can always run to the king side, the position will be a complete loss for you. So, Returning to the position, we see that the queen exchange creates a tough situation for you, hence, we have queen to c7, after a few moves, I captured the bishop with my g-pawn, you might wonder why I didn't capture with my e-pawn, the reason is simple, 
If you capture the bishop with your e-pawn, the queen diagonal opens up, rook takes h4 arrives, attacking the knight. After rook to h1, rook takes f4 will follow, sacrificing the rook, and after queen takes f4, you lose two passed pawns, your game will be over, and with two minor pieces, I will just win, that's why I didn't capture the bishop with my e-pawn but with my g-pawn, the point is, if you ever capture my h-pawn, rook to h1 will arrive, and you won't have the opportunity to capture the knight because your queen diagonal is closed, this changes the situation completely compared to before, however, in our actual game. Leela Zero is not an average player, she's clever and cunning, she played rook to h7, and I played h5, after some peace maneuvering, h6 followed, when rook to g8 came to attack my queen, I sacrificed my queen, hey Leela, you want my queen. Take it, I'm giving you a crucial gift, better than an iPhone, if you capture the queen, the rook will gain the g-file, and I'll push my h-pawn, your king cannot stop the pawn's movement, even if you play bishop c6, I'll push the pawn, and when the queen comes to d8 to protect it, it won't matter, I'll play rook to g7 check, and as the king moves back, pawn promotion will follow, and your game will be over, you'll be checkmated. So, going back to the position, we discovered that capturing my queen was impossible, therefore, Leela Zero played knight d7 because she had few viable options, even if you capture my queen in this position, it doesn't matter because I can promote my pawn to a new queen, and if you capture the rook, it doesn't matter either because I can checkmate you on the next move, the game will be over for you. So, back to the position, Leela Zero captured the pawn on f6 to support the rook, after I promoted to a new queen and my rook went to a6, attacking the bishop, queen g6 followed, as the king moved back, I threatened knight g6 check, leading to mate, after the knight moved and queen h8 came on the board, the king moved out, and rook takes e8 followed, the point is that you cannot capture the rook, if you do, after I play queen h7 check and the king moves back. Knight takes e6 will lead to checkmate, the game would be over for you. So, going back to the position, she didn't capture the rook because she knew the vulnerabilities, she gave me a check and tried to hold the position, but queen f8 led to a checkmate, this was our game, very romantic and adventurous, I hope you enjoyed it, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye take care, and see you soon.